Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weirdly sexualized cartoon characters. Could I take the rest of the afternoon off? Well, the rest of the afternoon? I don't know, Miss Bellum. There's so much to do with so little time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I'll see you later. For this list, we're looking at animated and CGI knockouts whose uncanny allure makes audiences blush, or just very uncomfortable. Since we're focusing on tunes whose seductiveness are inadvertent, at least as far as we know, or otherwise awkward, we'll be excluding bombshells intentionally drawn that way. A few Freudian slips are inevitable, so consider this your spoiler alert. Have you had a crush on one of these fictional stunners? Let us know in the comments below. Now let the gawking begin. Let's do this. Number 10. April O'Neil. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No one pulls off a yellow jumpsuit like this TV reporter. The Emperor is here to sell the mining rights to a last newly discovered deposit of Lydium-90 in his native Malacuria. She's been reimagined many different ways over the years. While Megan Fox's version of the character was a knockout, it's the heroine's depiction in the first animated series that has curiously enduring appeal all its own. April's intelligence, bravery, and plucky attitude made her attractive both as an ally to the Turtles and for fans of the show. Miss O'Neill, I can only hope you're here against your will. You're too pretty a last to be mixed up with the likes of these. Sergeant, you've got to believe me. These turtles did not steal the Tortellini Emerald. If you let him go, they'll capture the ones who did. This ginger stunner is total crush fuel and undoubtedly a major reason why Channel 6 News got such good ratings. When she dresses up, Miss O'Neill leaves the turtles stunned. Hi, guys. It's me. Gosh, April, you look just like a, a girl. Even when turned into a fish mutant hybrid, she's still pretty cute. Are you okay, April? Oh, sure, I'm great. Just call me Tina Tuna. Don't worry, we'll find a way to change you back to a human. Though, personally, I think you might look better with green skin and a shell. Number nine, Cleo, Pinocchio. No, you do, don't you, Cleo? The classic gangster threat of sleeping with the fishes may not sound half bad if it means you get to hang out with Geppetto's aquatic pet. First appearing way back in 1940, this golden swimmer has the eyes and lips of a classic Hollywood beauty. We get the impression that she has a thing for Geppetto's cat Figaro, but luckily for her fans, the feline definitely doesn't reciprocate. Figaro, you say goodnight to Beneath her golden scaly figure, she's also loyal and honest. Although Cleo doesn't like Geppetto's naming skills, she sticks with her owner even when they're swallowed by Monstro the giant whale. Cleo! Oh, Cleo! You're here too! Yes! We are all together again! (laughs) While she's not as traditionally attractive as some Disney princesses, Cleo's as captivating as any mermaid. Number 8. Tiger on the Bus slash Tiger Backup Dancers Zootopia While the city zoo of the film has a suave lion mare, it's the tigers who really win the hearts and minds of audiences. As Judy Hopps, the rabbit from bucolic Bunny Burrow, tries to solve a case involving predators mysteriously going crazy, she inadvertently sparks public fears about carnivores. It may have something to do with biology. What do you mean by that? A biological component you know, something in their DNA. During a montage, this bunny in blue spots a tiger on the train experiencing some unfair discrimination. This utopia I know is better than this. But the internet didn't care that he was an apex predator. They simply swooned hard over this gentle yet sophisticated striped Lothario. Meanwhile, during the film's closing, a pop star voiced by Shakira named Gazelle is flanked by a new foursome of beefy tigers. And these fierce predators definitely made fans go meow. I always get up now to see what's next. 
Number seven, Lion-O, Thundercats. In the jungle of fans' hearts, the lord of the alien feline humanoids reigns supreme. Hail Lion-O, truly the lord of the Thundercats. Thundercats, ho! Thunder, thunder, thunder. Physically, he looks like an unshaved Arnold Schwarzenegger, but admirers seem more interested in petting his fur than seeing it gone. Since this beefcake is the leader of his pride, calling him Prince Charming is more than accurate. This royal also wields some impressive equipment. His sword of omens has the power to expand when the occasion calls for it. The blade also gives him sight beyond sight and can even stand up to Excalibur. While he's all hunk on the outside, he's as gentle as a kitten on the inside. And I told him to return it to the Lady of the Lake. Why? Because I didn't earn it. You beat Mumra. I should never have fought him. Chitara was right. I let him get to me. And until I can control that, I've got a long way to go. Given Lionel's complex origin story, it's probably best that we avoid overanalyzing this beloved 80s cartoon character. Number 6. Aaron Esurance. Various Esurance Commercials. The pink haired spy slash insurance company spokeswoman was meant to attract policy sales, not the gaze of viewers. You? My policy's gonna expire at midnight. I need fast, affordable auto insurance now. You don't have to wait until your policy expires. You can switch to insurance anytime. But whether she was on the slopes, in the ring, or fresh out of the shower, Erin always managed to look her best. Agent here. Oh, that's cute. Does insurance call all of its agents special? Uh, sure, Mom. Thought I was at work. Her cat-like green eyes, curvy silhouette, and saucy demeanor really got into some customers' heads. Ladies and gentlemen, today's money match, Erin E. Insurance takes on overpriced auto insurance! It's no contest with instant comparison quotes. If you find a better deal through insurance, we'll help you buy the policy right away. While a corporate mascot attracting eyeballs is normally a good thing, the company didn't like the kind of attention she was getting. Adult fan art of the pink-haired bombshell started blowing up everywhere online. When combined with the fact that Aaron wasn't pulling well with viewers, she got canceled. This sultry spy will live on forever as an internet legend, however. Number 5. The Chipettes, Alvin and the Chipmunks. These female foils to the titular rodent rockers refused to play second fiddle. After the trio first stepped into the spotlight in 1983, they appeared alongside their male counterparts on the small and big screens. Each member of this terrific threesome has a different appeal for fans. Brittany is the strong-willed and sometimes domineering leader of the trio. Jeanette is the brains of the outfit, and if you've got a thing for librarians, she's the one for you. Rounding out the pop group is Eleanor, an adorable sweetheart with plenty of talent. Don't be ridiculous, Brittany. We've got to get this little guy back to Antarctica. He'll die if we don't. This trio has been making fans want to rock for decades now. Just go ahead, let your head down. It's no surprise that there are people who want to sing duets with these legendary performers. Number four, Sarah Bellum, the Powerpuff Girls. This sultry secretary is made of sugar, spice, and everything nice. Her personality makes her the perfect surrogate mother figure to the three diminutive superheroines. Girls, girls, wait. We don't want new superheroes. We love you. What? Besides, you haven't lost. You've just been attacking the problem from the wrong angle. Although Miss Bella may be matronly, there's so much more to her than just compassion and smarts. The way she's drawn, her appealing voice, and her strawberry curls drive the people of Townsville wild. The pity of Townsville. The pretty of Townsville. Miss Bellum has an equally stimulating effect on viewers as well. While we've only seen fleeting glimpses of her face, multiple characters have confirmed that she's a stunner. Could I take the rest of the afternoon off?
Well, the rest of the afternoon? I don't know, Miss Bellum. There's so much to do with so little time. Mm, okay. Thank you, Mayor. I'll see you later. Whether she's suggestively sharpening the mayor's pencil or catfighting female supervillain Sedusa, she's always, well, perfect. We just can't get enough of this loyal and mayoral secretary. Number 3. Skeletor He-Man and the Masters of the Universe while it's easy to see a buff hero's virtues, this blue meanie actually has a lot going for him. For one, his chiseled and massive muscles are easily a match for any jacked up jock. We admit that the villain's face is kind of bony, but he has several other attractive qualities. Unlike He-Man, who thinks whipping out a big sword solves everything, he's creative with his evil plans. Now to begin the incantation! Evil servant from beyond the galaxy, we summon you to do our bidding. And if passionate people inspire passion in others, Skeletor's drive will make you feel like you can do anything. This villain will never pretend to be your white knight. Not quite, He-Man. before from Shigora's trap, now we're even. However, he might just be the gothic ghoul of your secret desires. After all, who doesn't love a brooding bad boy with a soft spot for animals? <laughs> this is perfect. Once Shigora is out of the way, we can defeat He-Man and take over Castle Grayskull. Number two, Ian Flux. Ian Flux. Svelte yet voluptuous, this self-directed spy from the Society of Monica is the flexible field agent of our dystopian dreams. The future world she inhabits seems utterly nightmarish. But we would go there in a heartbeat for a chance to go undercover with her. From her high cheekbones to the soles of her feet, every part of the lean lady's body is a weapon. <laughs> the constant danger that this femme fatale faces only adds to her sensual magnetism. Well, well. It's no wonder that her arch nemesis and sometimes partner Trevor Goodchild became as obsessed with Eon as every teenager in the 90s was. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few other stunners that are worth a gaze. Josie and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats. This trio is ridiculously cute in their cat tails and ears. Josie and the Pussycats. Long tails and ears for hands. Lois Griffin. Family Guy. Coog's Auburn Enchantress casts a spell on millions of viewers. Beast, Beauty and the Beast. An appealing monster that's beefier than Gaston. Tale as old as time. Throttle, Modo, and Vinny. Biker Mice from Mars. These ripped rodents revved up their choppers and fans. <laughs> That's me. I'm the baddest motorcycle mama jamma in the universe. <laughs> Modest too. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lola Bunny. Space Jam. You want to play a little one-on-one, -on -one, doll? Doll? Uh-huh. On the court. Bugs. Sure. Ooh, he hot. It's pretty normal to associate rabbits with fertility, but the mammal took on a whole new association in a popular live-action animated hybrid 90s movie. And no, we're not talking about Bugs. Lola strutted onto the court, completely captured Bugs' attention, and hopped straight into the hearts of loyal Looney Tunes lovers. Her hourglass figure cuts quite the silhouette, and Lola's no-nonsense personality meant she wouldn't let you pigeonhole her or call her doll. Yes. Don't ever call me doll. 
Shame. Her hyper-feminine attributes confused and or awakened things in more than a few fans over the years. From her blonde trusses to her bawling ability, this tantalizing tune will always be our MVP. Thank you. Aw, it was nothing. That was the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.